Let's start our final class today with recitation of Umul Kitab Al-Fatiha. Okay, so um, in the previous class, we learned that uh, some uh, material can, can conduct, uh, what we call, can conduct electricity, some material cannot conduct electricity. Those who can conduct electricity, we call it, uh, what we call it, conductor. Those who cannot conduct, we call it insulator. Uh, and we also learned that some non-metal, for example, like carbon, like here, uh, it can also conduct uh, electricity provided the structure allow that. For example, if you have a carbon with the structure of graphite, you have the extra electron in it and that extra electron can move around the lattice. Okay, so we learned this before, but also if the structure is not like this, like in diamond, you have this tetrahedral structure where there are no free electron there, then the electron cannot move here and there. So you cannot conduct electricity. So diamond is basically electrical uh, insulator. Lah. We can say electrical insulator. But diamond, even though it's electrical insulator, it is one of the best, what we call this diamond here. Even though we call it electric, it's an uh, insulator uh, in terms of electricity. But the diamond is uh, a conductor in terms of thermal. Meaning that it's a good thermal, thermal conductor. Eh? Conductor insulator in fact diamond is one of the best uh, thermal conductor if you hit the diamond the diamond uh, can transfer the heat very fast lah. Uh, the reason why it good uh, in terms of thermal is because uh, the, the lattice the diamond lattice is quite like uh, quite rigid so and you know the thermal that the heat is because of the vibration of the atom so when you hit something here something here and then you have this uh, this what we call this uh, lattice here connecting with another lattice here if the lattice l a t t i c l a that l a t t i c e the lattice let's say you have something like this something like this if you hit here if you hit here if the lattice itself let's say this lattice is a uh, very uh, what we call rigid then it can convert the what we call the 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 heat the, the vibration very fast to here so that's why a diamond is one of the what we call good thermal conductor but it's weak is insulator for the electricity because for the electricity to happen you need the mobile electron that's the important that's the difference between the the, the electricity and also the thermal electricity need the mobile charge but thermal the heat conductivity doesn't need the what we call the 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 the, the, the nilah the the what we call the the mobile electron if you look at the this thing even here also you can see that uh, if i may i will put here if i go to this uh, what we call the conductivity here you have thermal okay thermal okay or oh, carbon because diamond is the same thing i mean diamond and graphite is both are carbon so you cannot really see uh, here lah because this carbon is pure carbon so it's not in a, like a bulk form bulk bulk b u l k bulk form so it, it cannot tell you uh, this is diamond or this is graphite so you cannot really see lah here even though the the pure carbon there the pure carbon there in term of thermal and also in term of electricity here is more or less uh, doesn't must change lah the color it doesn't really change there so for example if i click there electric there you can see the electric there and if i click uh, the thermal there are no they are a little bit changed in term of color but then you cannot really tell because both carbon both diamond and both graphite is a carbon base pure carbon but the difference is just the what we call the structure so the structure play important role on the properties of material it's not only you cannot just rely on this periodic table when you create a structure out of this element then it might be different like the case of a diamond and graphite so periodic table is fine for the pure substance but then in real life you have something that is combination of this element and so on so 
all the stuff will become different lah. So this spread table is good for the element, but when you deal with the real stuff, then you need to consider the combination and so on. Okay, let's go back to here. Uh, let me go here. So we learned about that before. Uh, let me make it bigger a little bit. Okay, let's go to our today is here. So we also thought that uh, the what we call the water molecule, uh, water molecule that you have, what we call the H2O, the water molecule, you have this, uh, what we call this uh, oxygen and also this uh, hydrogen there. This also can conduct electricity provided, uh, provided it can conduct electricity provided they are... Uh, they are dissolved dissolve ion in the water lah. for example you have a cup of water and then inside this thing you have what we call a uh, dissolved ion inside this thing then you it can conduct electricity but the pure water normally they cannot conduct eh? pure water if you have a pure water pure water typically we can say that pure water is more like insulator insulator because even though, even though here, if you look this uh, picture of the water, even though they are polarity, polarity there, polarity meaning that uh, they are different in terms of electronegativity. So if you see here, uh, if I may, if this thing, the oxygen here, this is oxygen and this is what we call the hydrogen. So let me put here, this is oxygen, this is the hydrogen, hydrogen oxygen and if you look at the electronegativity electronegativity is what electronegativity electronegativity is basically the ability of what we call the ability of uh, an atom to uh, attract electron lah. to attract electron Strong. so that's what does it mean the electronegativity the oxygen and hydrogen have a uh, what we call uh, very different electronegativity. So one of it will attract ad another stronger than another one. Lah. So if you look at the periodic table here, so if I go to periodic table there again, uh, let me open the periodic table there. So if I go to electronegativity, so if I I put you down, lah, I put you down. If you go to electronegativity there, this thing, you can see here there are electronegativity. If I click there, you can see there are color change, right? So the darker the color is the more uh, electronegative lah. So if you look here, uh, you see the oxygen, the electronegativity is 3.44 and the hydrogen there is 2.20. So it's not, it's a little bit far lah. I mean 3, 3.4 and 2.2 is a little bit far. Meaning that the oxygen will sort of like attract the hydrogen greater than the hydrogen can attract oxygen. So that's what, what does it mean by electronegativity. If you look at this periodic table, you can see the fluorine is the most, the highest electronegativity, 3.98. Meaning that whatever attached to the fluorine, the fluorine will not sort of like uh, release it easily. Lah. That's why you have this uh, Teflon. So for example, this Teflon. Eh? So you can see this Teflon. Eh? We learned Teflon, PTFE, in a polymer part before, in, before the midterm. So we know that Teflon is basically the carbon. So Teflon is basically simply a carbon. So let me put here, Teflon, let me just put somewhere here. Teflon is simply like uh, like this. Huh? You have carbon, 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 and then you have the, what we call the fluorine, 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 whatever like that lah fluorine and so on so carbon attached to the fluorine so because fluorine have highest electronegativity it's very difficult to other atom to remove fluorine from the carbon fluorine uh, uh, what we call uh, interaction there so that's why this PTFE is very inert because other chemical if you use other chemical let's say whatever lah other chemical then there are no reaction happen because fluorine and carbon is what we call is happy happily uh, life together they, they don't care about whatever happened uh, outside the whole thing so that's uh, one of the reason why teflon is in it because of this because of the fluorine have very high electronegativity in such a way that other electron other atom cannot sort of like uh, 
throw it out from this carbon flow in, in PTFE molecule lah, uh, PTFE material. Okay, so that's about the electronegativity. If you look here for the water, we talk about water now. So oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen have higher electronegativity than hydrogen. So meaning that when you draw the oxygen atom, uh, you you sort of like people draw there are some partial negativity to the what we call to the oxygen. So you uh, normally you see people draw something like this. So like this. Like this, like that. Okay, what does it mean? Is that the 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 what you call the electron? They 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 are what we call they are they are accumulate themselves more towards the uh, 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 oxygen than the hydrogen. When you have this thing, when you have this what we call uh, sort of like a uh, tug of war, something that attract more than other you get some we call something what we call polarity okay so that's why we call it water is non-polar that's why water is polar because of this thing you have a uh, it's as if like, like the electron stay on the what you call on the oxygen rather than on the hydrogen so when we talk about polar so when we talk about polar polar is something you know the 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 what you call the magnet eh? you have magnet you have a north and south both are polar we call it polar and you also have what we call the earth the earth you have what we call you have north 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 pole and also you have the south pole you also have in the battery normally in the battery you have this positive and then this negative like this eh? this battery so when you have this two part that is totally different we call that polar lah we call it polar so because water you have this uh, the what you call the 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 this thing the most of the electron uh, sort of like aggregate on the oxygen side so we say that is the polarity happen okay so that's the thing eh? <coughs> so when they are polarity eh, in term of this let's say we take battery eh, when you see battery uh, when you see the battery here they can con they can conduct electricity because of this polarity eh? uh, if you have like for example one uh, polarity we can say that um, what we call eh? uh, you can view this polarity positive and negative as the potential energy eh? you can view the, the in the battery eh? I thought in the battery first before we go to the water eh? in the battery here you can view the polarity of this uh, as a different uh, the polar polarity in the battery you can view as a difference difference in potential energy potential energy okay what does it mean there meaning that potential energy how to get around with the word of potential energy you view it as a, what we call like a waterfall lah. for example you know that if let's say you have this uh, waterfall this this is the rock and then you have waterfall down there go down so the waterfall this waterfall waterfall they go down because of that they are different in the uh, potential energy and the top we call it like high 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 high, high potential lah. we can call it high potential and then the lower here we call it low potential lah. low potential so when they are different in potential energy, the they are flow from the high to the low. So that's why the waterfall flow go down lah. So same with the battery because of the different in potential energy, they are flow so they can conduct current. So the, when you see the battery like 1.5 volt versus 9 volt, the difference between this is the difference in potential. So you can view this battery like 1.5 volt, like the what we call like the very small waterfall, and 9 volt like the very high waterfall. So that's you can view like that lah. So you have 1.5 volt is just like this the small waterfall. So the difference between potential energy is not too great, but 9 volt you have like uh, more more different in the potential energy so the waterfall it becomes so high lah so that's the different in terms of battery okay 
So now uh, this thing, uh, the battery only work when you connect. Eh? When you connect, because what? Because inside the battery, even though they are different in potential energy, you see this battery is still like that. It doesn't conduct electricity yet. Because why? Because in the battery you have in the let's say I draw the battery here, the battery here. Let's say this battery, the carbon, let's say carbon zinc battery. You have this, uh, the carbon, let's say this carbon carbon battery, carbon zinc battery. So you have this carbon and then this maybe the electrolyte lah, electrolyte, electrolyte. Uh, it's like some electrolyte lah. So the carbon, uh, the potential energy doesn't, doesn't flow because they are separator here. They are separator between carbon and this thing. That's why they are they doesn't flow when you have the battery. It doesn't flow. The electric doesn't flow. But when you conduct, when you try to what we call to uh, to connect this battery, this thing, the whatever uh, positive or negative, positive to the negative here, you put a wire. Then let's say this positive, this negative. Then you can now. It's like as if now the waterfall can start moving from top to the bottom. Okay, because now you 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 don't. Uh, even though they are separated now you move the the water can flow i mean the electron can flow from here to here lah electron basically flow from here to here you will learn before the electron and this thing before so that's the thing lah so let me take this and make it a little bit small let me make it small so that we can put here lah we can put here and then let me make it small because i want to talk about this thing first okay so that's about the battery so now what about the water if we see before the battery can sort of conduct electricity because of there are different in potential energy if you look at the water here if you look at the water here so this water so i draw like this they also some sort of like what we call uh, what we call the different in the energy because of the the electron uh, stay here and the proton stay uh, the positive charge stay at the ways so this here if you look at the water especially pure water they cannot generate they cannot allow the electricity to move uh, even though there are some potential uh, different in the what we call potential energy mean, meaning that they are different in electronegativity uh, they cannot uh, really what we call really do like a battery because the difference is too small and also plus you have this they are no separator here in the battery you have separator in the what you call in the water molecule in the water molecule molecule h2o the positive and the negative cancel each other even though there are difference in term of how the electron uh, aggregate in the molecule but uh, we have a lot of molecule of water imagine you have like a lot of water uh, h2o uh, you have this water here water here water here water here water here water here and then if i draw like this like that like that like there are a lot of water and all this water uh the even though they are imbalanced not imbalanced in uh in uh charge it's just imbalanced in how charge is is uh the region the region of charge meaning that if let's say you can draw something like this so if let's say this is the electron the electron more like accumulate here lah so in in uh, in water lah in water so the, the electron more or less go to some region but even though like this even though they are like separation like uh, like poles there but they are not enough to to what we call to to first to have this waterfall moving plus they are all they also all the the effect of this is counterbalanced by the positive and negative they, they, they cancel out because you, you you have this positive and then the as negative they count they balance each other they already balance each other so pure water is basically uh we can say more or less uh insulator lah in 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 essence even though they are like polarity there so um but when people talk when you you heard people talk about water normally what they talk is a normal water okay the word pure water when you have pure water pure water you don't talk about water in the spring in the that's mineral water even though you go, you buy what we call you buy a 
mineral water and they said that this mineral water are uh, taken from the very pure pure location and so on that's still not a pure water that's a mineral water and mineral you know mineral they have like a lot of stuff lah so there's a lot of iron in the that mineral water and so on the pure water normally you hear this pure water in the lab okay they we have sort of like the name ultra pure water something like that this ultra pure water how they do it is that they remove all the iron inside the water okay so if you have something that is fully fully deionized then you get a uh, ultra pure water lah normally you can see this ultra pure water in the lab lah uh, when people make a uh, membrane or whatever they use this ultra pure water so in order to test a water is pure or not we see before that if the water is not pure then they are what we call they are iron inside that okay and when they are iron inside the water then the iron can sort of like can become a mediator to conduct the electricity to allow the electricity to move lah because when you have water normal water here let's say you have a normal water and then this normal water and then you have iron positive negative positive negative this positive negative positive uh, negative iron we learn before iron what is iron iron is just an atom that is deficient in electron or they are extra electron that is iron they are imbalanced in electron if the the atom is neutral we don't call it iron eh? when the atom for example uh, when let's say for example hydrogen hydrogen by itself is neutral because hydrogen have what have one atom uh, have one proton in in what you call in the middle this positive and also they are what we call they are one uh, electron so you have positive and negative cancel out so if let's say this electron goes out then the you get what you get h plus lah if the with the electron in the hydrogen atom goes out then you get uh, h plus and the h plus is the ion if let's say you put another what we call another electron goes to the neutral uh, hydrogen atom you get the h negative lah so that's the ion definition of ion if the atom that whether the atom deficient in electron or def, uh, or have more electron it's not in neutral state okay so when you have a water there let's say you have water there and then you have this uh, uh, iron inside that so the iron because of its uh, you have this positive and negative you have this extra or or deficient in electron uh, it can sort of like uh, move around because in water you see water is mobile so this thing move around so when you have something ion in a water so then if you have like battery there let's say you have battery battery and then you try to put this here and let's say in the middle there they are like what we call the lamp there and then you connect the the circuit you can see the what we call the battery the battery will not work out uh will will switch on lah because they can conduct the electricity this thing the ion help to conduct the uh, electricity so uh, in order to see whether a water is pure or not you can use this idea the whether it can conduct electric electricity or not so the pure water by definition cannot conduct conduct electricity electricity because there are no uh, ion there <coughs> so how people test it people use uh, what we call the the this uh, people check in term of resistivity we learned about resistivity before you have this conduct you have this conduct meaning that you have the conductivity there conductivity we also learned before we learned about resisti resistivity eh? so these two thing is just inverse each other lah so if let's say conductivity is have this something like this sigma the the, the symbol resistivity is r lah so uh, uh, so <coughs> so for example the this thing uh, the what we call the the resistivity where is the thing eh? I don't see I do it. Nah. 
hilang dah tak ada tak kisahlah anyway the resistivity and the conductivity uh, the the r is basically inverse of the uh, the conductivity lah we know before that you can use the ohmmeter like this to check the the resistivity the the ohm for the the resistivity normally you see it in term of ohm lah the ohm okay so you see ohm okay uh, <coughs> so that's the man tak tahu mana dia lah tak kisah lah um, and also uh, this thing the the resistivity of something is basically also the function of length and also the area eh? the length over area so this basically the formula for resistivity is inverse of conductivity but also is a function of length and area meaning that if let's say you have something the wire that is so long the L is length eh? L is length and also A is area if you have the what we call the the wire is so long then you you have what we call uh, higher resistivity lah so if let's say you have what we call this let's say this is your what we call your battery and then once is you have this uh, lamp there compare this if let's say you have another battery here and then you have very long very long wire so you can see that uh, this let's say this a and this b so the lamp on the b will become more uh, less nila less uh, brighter than a because they are a long because mm. this is long wire and then they are increase high the longer the wire the higher the resistivity lah so that's the idea so let me make it smaller lah here let me make it smaller and then put here so put there and then this also maybe I make it smaller lah because it's just too big there okay so that that's the thing eh? so you have this uh, the, what we call the formula for what we call resistivity lah <coughs> okay so you know that the conductivity and resistivity sort of like uh, in relate each other uh, in order to see whether thing is pure or not or the water is pure or not people normally check the resistivity of the water if you go to google if you find go to google here and then you type the ultra pure water let me I put it uh, full screen okay so let the ultra ultra pure water <coughs> ultra pure water wikipedia okay so if you go here and then you can see down there blah 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 you can see here okay test parameter you want to test whether some uh, water is pure or not you see the resistivity at the room temperature you can see that is is above 18 mega ohm meaning that mega mean that 10 to the power of 6 lah in million so 10 uh, 18 mega ohm so whenever you see a uh, uh, ultra pure water like what we call dispenser or whatever normally you can see in the in the what we call in the specification they they will tell you okay this dispenser will give you the resistivity of water of what so the higher the resistivity the higher the resistivity meaning that is more pure lah because we we say before that uh, the pure water doesn't conduct electricity why because they have this resist resist it resist the electron flow lah so the resistivity is can be calculated by this thing lah by the the ohm there you can check with this thing lah you can check with the this thing, this what we call uh, the ohmmeter whatever so that's how people test the what we call the the resistivity of the water lah okay but if you use the normal water then the resistivity is uh, less lah it's less okay so for example let's say i go here let me maybe bring you there i mean maybe bring you here so let's say this is the battery you see you know the battery and then this is the ohm lah this uh, what we call ohmmeter i put on the what we call the ohm there whether you can see or not hopefully you can see lah so this is basically i put it on the uh, the ohm to check the ohm let's say you have a pure water let's say i have this thing the normal water and then i pour the water there i pour the water just a very few water there 
just a very few of like that and then i try to check with this uh, what we call this ohmmeter eh? hopefully you can still hear me oh yeah you can still hear me hopefully so if i put this on that okay on that you get what you get uh, is you get around four five uh, six seven you wait lah you need to wait uh, but basically uh it will go to no. Yeah, we go higher and higher lah. Sometimes it's beyond. Yeah, because this is cheap one. This is cheap uh, multimeter, so it's not really accurate in that thing lah. But you can see it's around 400, 500, something like that. Okay, uh, so like that. Okay, because okay, 500, 7, 600 like that lah. So in order to make it uh, more, this meaning that you get this, this is uh, not pure water. This is just like uh, I take the water from somewhere. So this is not pure water. You can increase the, uh, what we call, the resistivity here by adding the salt. Uh, uh, you can increase the conductivity by adding the salt, the normal salt. If you have salt like this, uh, if let's say you have something like this, let's say I, uh, I make it uh, below. If you have water there, so you know this water now so you have this water if you add the salt okay and acl this is salt you put the salt in water so we know uh, when you put a salt in water the this become what it become an a plus and a cl minus so the salt will be deionized uh, will sort of like the will not deionized meaning that it will separate lah it become ion by itself because salt here if you look at the salt here this is salt eh? salt so the way how they combine with each other is using the ionic bond eh? so you have imagine you have a uh, uh, sodium like this sodium like this sodium like this and then you have the what we call the chlorine like there chlorine 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 imagine lah imagine so this thing these two things they connected with the ionic bond eh? they connected with what we call the ionic bond ionic bond it's not a covalent bond it's not a metallic bond we learned before the uh, covalent bond is where where the thing share the electron uh, it's also not a metallic bond because metallic bond you see they are like what we call free electron so the salt is type of uh, material that is connected with the ionic bond okay when you have ionic bond it itself is strong when it is solid strong but when you put the ionic thing in the water then the ion will be separated lah this thing so it be, it got this uh inside this in, uh, on the what we call on the outside if you have uh, this salt the garam on the outside you see it's like this solid right so the the sodium and the chloride is uh pressed together very uh tightly but once you put in the water uh this uh this thing the sodium and chloride will be separate ion and cl ion and cl that's why you got the that's why we say that the salt dissolve in water okay salt dissolve in water sugar is different eh? sugar this is salt this is salt sugar is different if you see sugar sugar is not ionic eh? sugar is basically covalent sugar is covalent the sugar when you see sugar sugar is something like this oh, oh. later on when you learn in the organic chemistry you will learn one part we call it polysaccharide so sugar is one of the polysaccharide uh, the simple sugar like a glucose they have the structure structure like this OH and then the OH like this this is a simple sugar lah. this is simple sugar so if you look here this is not ionic eh? sugar is just a covalent bond so this O and H is covalently bonded this carbon here this carbon here and the O here is covalently bonded. This mm -hmm. carbon here covalently bom bonded with the O, covalently bonded with this O, covalently bonded with H, and so on. So it's covalent. So the way sugar dissolves is a little bit different, lah. Uh, but the salt, when the salt and sugar, even though when you go to your kitchen, it seems the same thing, like a white powder. Even though you see the salt is like this, like like a powder, sugar also like a powder like that. But two thing, these two material is totally different in the way how they connect their molecule, their atom connect inside. Salt is ionic, and sugar is uh, covalent in nature. So we talk about the ionic thing. Eh? So we see before if I put in here the 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 conductivity is around what is around five hundred like that, right? But if I add the what 
if I add the this this is salt ah this salt ah this salt if I add some nah dia dia karam so if I add some okay but before I add this thing uh let me show you something eh uh if let's say I add I take this thing like, because I want to show you something if I take this uh, what we call this because the 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 concept of uh, conducting electricity or not can be used to the advantage uh, by what we call uh, what we call one of the concept called, where is the thing okay okay one of the advantage of electricity eh, while before I talk about this thing one of the eh, let me put here Okay, let me put here. Put here. Okay, oh, you can see. Eh? Let me bring here lah. Let me bring here. Okay. Why we learn about this electricity here is because uh, when you have something that can conduct, when you have a fluid that can conduct electricity and also can move the iron within the, what you call, in the, that liquid, then you can have this uh, one of the a technique called electroplating eh? electroplating okay so imagine now you have what we call you have a sort of like um, what we call you have this thing you have uh, let me put in the thing let me put in this thing okay let's say you have this beaker and then you put water that whatever lah uh, let's say you put uh, something uh, that this thing the solution here let's say the solution have the iron i mean that they can able to conduct electricity I want to show you uh, what is the uh, use of having something that can conduct electricity in water. Normally, when we talk about metal, metal is solid. So, solid metal, yes, you can conduct electricity. But the fluid, fluid can also conduct electricity provided there are iron inside that. So, what is the use of having a fluid, okay, a fluid that can conduct electricity is that uh you can do electroplating meaning that if let's say you have uh, one side here let's say i put here silver let's say i put silver you know silver silver is a metal and also in one part here you have what we call let's say i put it copper copper and then imagine this this thing this solution here solution oh uh, yeah you cannot be so i need to remove this thing first so let's say you have this thing the solution imagine this solution can conduct electricity yeah Meaning that there are iron in that there, in, inside that lah. Imagine that. And then you have the battery there. Let's say you have the battery here. And then maybe this, this is positive and this is negative. And then you try what we call, you try to connect with what, uh, the wire. Let's say you connect this thing with wire. This thing. And connect this wire. What happened? Because this solution have this iron inside that, then you can complete the circuit. So when when you connect like this what happen now is that the what we call the 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 this silver the silver plate whatever can sort of like when you connect with the battery what happen is that this thing eh, the electron will move to the to the positive uh, terminal and then here the electron can be pushed here lah can be pushed here the electron lah so what does it mean meaning that the uh, the 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 plate of the silver will be lose the electron because the electron will move so when the electron move let's say you have silver you have the silver there so you become when the electron move electron move what will happen you get ag positive lah that's what happened when meaning that when you connect with the battery there so the the silver plate there are many atoms inside the silver right so some of the silver atom will lose the electron because the electron will be pushed to the battery okay so you become what left in here is uh what we call this uh silver ion silver ion lah this is silver ion lah silver ion this is solid silver lah this is solid silver solid silver because iron is not solid because iron one of the uh, ability of the iron is iron can dissolve in water like we see in the in this eh in this what we call in this uh, salt when you have what we call iron iron can dissolve in water so in this case when what we call when the when the solid silver lose the electron so the the what we call the iron of the silver can can go to here 
can go to the solution can go to the solution okay so look here this is negative part so meaning that the electron will be pushed out so the electron will be pushed out electron is the same thing whether it's come from the silver or from the copper or from whatever electron is the same thing electron is is the electron is the unit it's not like the electron from the silver will be different from the electron from the carbon no the electron is the same thing so here the electron will be pushed to this uh, copper so imagine now they are like electron coming in here so now the the what we call the cup the copper the copper here have extra electron okay so because they are like what we call the the the, the silver ion on the water and they are electron here they are electron in the extra electron on the copper they are the silver ion in the water what will happen they will connect lah because you have this uh, negative and positive charge so what happened now is that this uh, copper here this copper here this copper here let's say this copper here this copper here will attract the silver ion the silver ion so the silver ion will sort of like be here lah silver will be here will be attracted to the copper so you will see that they are like the copper plate will sort of like uh, coated by the silver so this coating process they we call it electroplating because we use electric to do the plate plating or coating lah so this is one of the use of having the uh, mobile uh, ion inside the what we call inside the inside any liquid lah normally when we talk about electricity we talk about solid metal fine but also electricity can also you can create electricity using the something fluid lah that's why you have battery the car battery also uh, using electrolyte the electrolyte is basically the solution that can conduct electricity so that's what the purpose of uh, the, the, the term electrolyte okay so you can see this thing okay let me put here so you can see that thing eh? so now let's say i put this thing so we can use this thing eh? we can use the the what we call put here lah you can see so you can see that thing this also metal this uh, shilling is also metal so this uh, 10 cent normally make from the stainless steel lah uh, uh, the, the new uh, the new 10 cent nowadays is made from the stainless steel uh, the the 50 cent or the 20 cent is basically made from what we call uh, it make from uh, uh, nickel, brass, and brass is basically uh, a combination of copper and what we call copper and zinc. So normally here, this thing, the shiny shiny thing, is not gold. Eh? <laughs> it's basically combination of brass and nickel. This thing, okay, copper, uh, brass and nickel. Inside this, in brass, you know the word brass. Okay, I put here lah. Senang. So you have this 50 cent. 50 cent is basically uh, brass plus nickel. Nickel. This brass is basically combination of zinc plus what? Eh? Plus plus brass, zinc plus copper. 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 So that is 50 cent. The 10 cent, the 10 cent is basically uh, the new one is stainless steel. Lah. Stainless steel. So you have two different metal and then when you do something like this, when you do a uh, when you when you try to do something this electroplating then you can you can come you can make the electroplating happen when you do here lah and so for example let's say i put this thing but first i need to convert this what we call this uh water here because this water we see before they have some uh what we call some uh resistivity yeah the this i think i think i take from a chuko kako kuko kuko kowe uh, like that so there are some what we call uh, we can say there are some there are a lot of resistivity lah compared to the uh, normal water uh, mineral water whatever so if i do the electroplating here then it doesn't really uh, work well lah so i need to make sure there are some iron inside that so how i can do is i can put uh, some uh, some garam uh, some uh, salt in that so it is salt so you just put let's say i put there some salt uh, i just do there i do there so now what happened now when i do like this what happened is that the salt uh, which is a uh, sodium chloride now it will be this deassociate uh, the term is deassociate to the sodium and chloride ion eh? so sodium and chloride ion let me do this thing 
You know when you want to try to do something uh, quite fast when you are chasing time, you are kelang kabut macam ni lah. But anyway, so I want to make sure it's clear. So that every, so I mean, I want to make sure everything dissolve. When you know this thing dissolve, you know that all the sodium chloride become ions. So that's when you do this, it dissolve. Let's say lah, let's say this is already dissolved. So let me take this this thing there so let me try to check the resistivity for this thing eh? previously it's around 500 something right so I don't know what is this maybe a little bit lower yeah you can see it's a little bit lower right it's 19 something like that 200 uh, it goes like that lah 200 300 yeah it goes, not really stable there but basically it's around 200 something like that so you can see a decrease in resistivity here the one that you see here is a uh, uh, i put in the ohm uh, so mean that it measure the resistivity so it's a little less lah than before when there are no salt so what happened now if i put here if let's say i put uh i, I conduct the this thing so let me i put here so here the black one is the uh what i call the positive one eh? So I put uh, the the positive one in the what we call in the black. So let me I put there, put there, and then I connect this thing with the uh, the the nila. This thing, the what we call this. Uh, this is the ten cent. That is the uh, thing. So I think. So let me uh, let me put like this. Okay, let me put like that. Let me zoom a little bit. You will see something happen there. Hey, alamak, mana nak ubah? Let me put there. Ah, uh, you can see the bubble there. Eh? So using what you learned before, uh, using what you learned before, what happening now is basically this electroplating uh, thing lah. So you you uh, I cannot see lah here because yeah. anyway. So whatever whatever happened now, I put the fifty cent on the one side and the ten cent on the another side. So the red is what lah? Uh, the red is positive side. The black is the negative side. So negative is to the what you call to the to the to the fifty cent fifty cent have copper and so on and that the uh, so basically now what happening I cannot see lah here hmm cuman nak buka ni saya tak nak gajian sana ah let me put it here okay so basically what happened now the negative part the negative part here is basically the 50 cent ah. Negative 50 cent ah. Negative 50 cent ah. So this 50 cent ah. Imagine this 50 cent here. So what happened now? You can see the 50 cent. So what will happen? Is that 50 cent is basically coated ah, or what? Coated or not coated? Ah. So the way, the way how you put effect ah. If you put the 50 cent on the red, is different than when you put the 50 cent on the black. Here, this thing, the black or red here. Okay. So, uh, so this electroplating. So, let's say I, I uh, so you can see the color there. The color change. So, something coming out. Eh? Something coming out from this thing. So, let's say I take this thing. I take the tissue paper. And then I finish lah. So, you can see. No, this other way around ni, I think. So, this other way around. So, you can see this. You can see that thing is other way around ni. Okay. Salah, salah. Terminal ke apa? Because if I do like, let's say I do again. Eh? So this is what we call when I put the 50 cent on the black. Eh? Remember? Eh? So you think yourself lah. You think yourself. This is for black. So let's say this I put on the uh, other way around. Just to show you the difference. Eh? I do it very fast. Eh? So here. And then I put some. Mana eh? Some some salt there to make it ionic. 
Okay, I just want to show you the difference between when you change the polarity, uh, the thing change lah. Okay, so this I will change the thing. So instead of putting the, I have another fifty cent there, and also the ten cent here. So what I put is that is I put the fifty cent on the what, red now, on the red, and then the ten cent on the uh, black. So we see what will happen. So if I make it bigger there, so you can see now. You cannot see eh? Hopefully you can see lah, even though you cannot see but because it's difficult to change the thing to change the thing so but what you can see is that on the previously on the 50 cent the gold colored thing you have the bubble but now it's other way around now you have what we call uh, the 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 what we call the 10 cent have the bubbling thing so I don't know I think the the, the thing is different lah. So we see uh, something different happen later on. So this uh, what we call electro plating lah, electro plating thing. Okay, so let me wait for a while. So this, uh, you make sense? Eh? So this is when the, this is on the negative terminal. This is negative terminal. So let's see, I put negative. This is positive, eh? positive terminal. Okay, so so let me yes. let me wait for a while. Okay, so you can see here there. So let me take it out. So you can see uh, on the tissue paper there, I put uh, this uh, positive or negative. Where? Eh? So now I take it out here. So this negative there, and then this is the positive. Okay. Okay, I'm not, not sure whether this is correct or wrong, but anyway, so you can see the difference in terms of uh, thing happen lah. Um, so if we look here, the, the, the image here, the electroplatic image here, when on the positive part here, you can see here the positive part here, I, you can see this, the cursor, right? You will see that the metal will lose something, right? The copper here, they lose something. But if you look here, if you look the image, it's as if that they are coated here, right? It's like other way around. I mean, let me make it small, make it bigger, eh? make it bigger. Kacau lah ni. Duduk sana sikit. Okay. So, hey, nak buat ni. Kau ada pada pasang tangan sikit. Okay, so you can see. Uh, we said before, the positive, if you, you connect with the positive part, you can see that the solid silver uh, in the, in the ni lah, in the what we call, uh, in the my notes here, the solid silver will lose the electron, meaning that it becomes sort of like, not coated, remove, remove, the silver will be removed. So here, it seems like the positive is like coated, but in reality, it's not coated, huh? it's removed. Huh? If I take the tissue paper, the tissue paper, and I try to, to, what we call, to scrap this, you can see, they are dula, D-U-L-L-E-R, I don't know lah, is there any term like that. But anyway, you can see, it's actually removed, it's not coated, huh? it's not coated, it's removed from the, from the what you call from the 50 cent this also is removed from the thing lah. from the thing it's removed it's removed from the what we call from the ni, ni lah and previously we learn about okay dah dah lah ni kabut dah so previously we learn about this thing and you can see the the the, the alamak hilang pula okay you can see here you can see the color is quite straight it's quite like darker there but remember, there are iron there, and there are iron metal, and metal is heavy. This is where the force of gravity takes into ni lah. Over time, if you left it uh, long enough, you will see that the thing will spread that way. Eh? So you can see that. Over time, it will separate down. So this how the, what we call, how the gravity uh, play a role in material separation. Uh. So when you learn about the uh, uh, 
let on separation uh, chemistry Eulian gravity also have some use even though we say that gravity only affect the big thing but because this metal and the, what we call the water have a very different density so you can use gravity to separate things so that's also one of the use of gravity it's not like gravity even though it's affect only the big thing it doesn't have any uh, use in the normal days it can be used can be used there lah okay so that's the thing so let uh, talk a little bit last thing about the uh, the last part so now is a 9:49 so i will take another 5 minutes lah here lah okay so let's talk about something here let, if you look at the periodic table wait ah kelak kabut dah senang macam ni pening balik okay if you look here uh, if i go to let's say uh, where uh, discovered okay Okay, if you look here, if you look here, if you see there are metal, we we cover metal a lot, right? We cover metal a lot. If I click here, you can see that's metal. We cover a lot of metal, electricity, magnetism, and so on. We also cover a little bit about non-metal. Uh, when we talk about polymer, we talk about covalent bond, and so on. We talk also non-metal, but there are also some part we call it metalloid in in what we call in the product table. So this metalloid, they have what we call properties between metal and also non-metal. Okay, for example, silicon, boron, germanium, arsenic, blah blah blah, and so on. So, if you look at the conductivity of this thing, if I go to conductivity, if I click conductivity, you can see the metalloid here, boron, silicon, and so on. Let me put in the what I call electricity. Okay, so you can see a uh, metal. The number is bigger, right? Thirty-eight, seven point one. Uh, it's a lot, lah. It's a lot. If you see non-metal, normally non-metal they don't know lah because it's gas here, it's gas. That's why they don't put the numbers. And chlorine here, you can see negative eight, negative twenty-one. So it's very very low in terms of conductivity. So here you see, ah, don't uh, please remember I put conductivity here, conductivity, conductivity. So you can see, but the what we call the metalloid is in between lah, in in between. So they have uh, a unique properties lah. The metal lot have the unique properties of this between metal and non-metal. So let me go down. So these properties of metal lot, eh, property of metal lot, they can they can what we call they can um, conduct electricity. If let's say they are doping, eh, they are what we call doing uh, some doping. Um, <coughs> so let's say eh, you have silicon, eh, silicon, you have silicon. Silicon. If you have two silicon panel, uh, the silicon, wait, yeah, the silicon, eh? the silicon. If you have pure silicon, silicon, they are no use lah. If this is like silicon, if let's say this is the silicon, let's say this is silicon, then they are no much use in uh, conductivity because we see the conductivity of this silicon is very low lah. Normally, the silicon that you use, that you see, yeah, that people put in the your phone or your computer, is not pure silicon. Normally, this silicon they are not much use lah, not much use because of it is uh, insulator, more or less insulator. In order to make this conduct electricity, you need to dope it. We call it doping, eh? We call it dope. We need to dope it. D O P E. We need to dope. So doping is the act of adding impurities. Adding impurities. On the silicon, when you dope, what will happen? The silicon can conduct, can increase in conductivity. Okay, so that's uh, basically what does it mean by dope? Pure silicon not much use, but if you dope this uh, silicon, then you can have uh, what we call uh, electricity happening lah. And why for that? What what is the reason why by doping? You don't need, when I said doping, it meaning that you just dope. You add only one atom out of millions. Meaning that you just add one atom out of million of silicon atoms. You just add one atom, then enough to make the silicon become conductive. So the idea for that, why the doping happen, is because of this. Huh? Because if let's say you have silicon, if you look at here, you have you look here the silicon. Let's say I put here in the discovered. If you look at the silicon there, silicon have what? If you look silicon. Silicon have four valence electron here. Four valence electron. Okay, four valence. Let's say I want to dope with the phosphorus. Eh? Let's say phosphorus. This phosphorus, you have five. Eh? Five valence electron. Eh? Five valence electron. 
So let's say silicon in the silicon itself, if the silicon if the, in the pure silicon, let's say the silicon, let's say I put the silicon lah, silicon, silicon, and silicon, and then the another silicon, and then the silicon, and then another silicon. Let's say you have like six silicon atom, and then you have like what we call, you have a uh, four valence, right? Silicon have four valence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because it's already so it's like this lah. Okay. Alamak. Dia kelang kabut ni dia saya saya agak ni sikit lah. Agak macam, macam tak betul sikit. Tapi bear with me lah last class eh. Okay so let me. Uh, it's okay I will make it bigger. A little bit bigger. Okay. Okay a little bit bigger. Okay so basically it's like this. Silicon is like this eh. So uh, you see this thing, uh, the let's say this silicon normally have four valent electron. Meaning that I put in blue, eh? One, two, three, four. In a in a material, in a, what we call in a material, if you have a lot of silicon, so this silicon, the blue. Let's say this another blue, another blue, another blue, another blue. So the red there is a valent electron from another silicon. They share lah, they share. So that's what they, they put in color lah. I put in color. So there, 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 there. Meaning that this thing. So you know the silicon. You have four like this. You have like this. Like that. And then you have, let's say, imagine this uh, blue. This blue. And then this. Ni lah. And then they have another four. Another red here. One, two, three, four. Four, four valents. And then also there are four valents for another silicon. Imagine this is silicon lah. Silicon. Silicon. So you see here in this, these two, they combine together. They make a covalent bond. So that's why this because silicon is not metal, lah. So you can see that's why we have the color like that. That's why just to show you what does it mean, lah. This thing. So I just simplify the thing. So if you put instead of silicon, you put uh, what we call other thing. Let's say you put a phosphorus. Let's say I draw. Uh, Skam kau dah? Ah, lima enam dah. Lama. Kelang kabut. Kelang kabut. Jap. Eh. I need to put something here, something top here lah, easy. Uh, wait lah. Eh. Put here, put here. Must easy to see something like this. Silicon, silicon. And then you have something like this, something like this, something like this. It just, I add another silicon lah. Let me put the color. So, see the difference there. Okay, let me put there. Okay. Eh, alamak, 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 alamak. Kenapa ni? Ah, dia pusing-pusing pula. This is what we call the wheel of death. Ah, you see? Anyway, hmm, not responding. Time ni lah pula tak responding. Anyway, if let's say ah, you can see that. Hopefully they okay. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, uh, at least you can see lah something. Uh, even though because now it's not responding, eh, not responding. The my my this thing not responding. I don't know what happened. But anyway, uh, if let's say uh, you change one silicon atom with the phosphorus. You can see there, the silicon, ha I cannot do anything because it just, I don't know, it doesn't work there. Let me close this thing first. Yeah, it's also everything, yeah. Close the program. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hmm, benda tu. Hmm, entahlah. Dia, dia safe ke tak, saya tak tahulah. Wait, ah, let me see whether they safe or not. If not safe, then not sure lah. Um, it's 9.58 Okay, luckily it's safe Okay, so that's why you don't do things in last minute eh? Anyway Okay, so you can see here uh, This thing, you can see this uh, silicon here I want to put there Okay, so you can see this thing So now, uh, when the, what we call When the everything, all silicon, pure silicon is like this So there are no extra electron Okay 
So doping, what does it mean by doping is that you add, you have something, let's say phosphorus, eh? let's say phosphorus, and we see from the, what we call from the, uh, from this thing, phosphorus has five valence electron, five, five valence electron. Meaning that what? Meaning that the phosphorus, if let's say I draw, let's say in, let's say green lah, in green, let's say you have one, two, three, four, five, let's say you have five there. So doping meaning that you take this thing, you take this thing out, you take this thing out, you take out, you take out, and then you bring this in. That's what does it mean by doping. Eh, mana eh? Kacau lah dia. You put this thing here. You put this thing here. So when you put that, this thing here, previously the silicon, if this is silicon, you have four valence electron. But now you have like five. Meaning that when you do covalent bond, there are extra, there are extra atom there. So this extra atom move around. And then you get this mobile charge. Lah. Uh, not, uh, not extra atom, extra electron. This elect extra electron will move around. So that's why you get the conductivity. You have this free electron move around the lattice of the silicon. Okay. So when this thing move to here, then it will move to there, there. So you, get, you have this mobile electron. So that's what does it mean by doping. You can also dope with something like uh, like uh, less electron. For example, let's say you have boron. Eh? Let's say you have boron. If you look here, boron, uh, boron here. Let me put boron. You see boron? Boron, you have three instead of silicon is four. Boron is three. Meaning that you have three valence electron. You have this, let's say I draw in, in what? Uh, in black. One, two, three. You have three, look. You have three. So the idea of doping with uh, the, the boron is that you take this thing, you take out, you put instead of uh, silicon, you put the boron there. Okay. So now you have three. Remember, the silicon have four, four valence electron, and then you have octet. But now you have a less. So when you have less there, then you have what we call um, uh, positive lah. The, the boron with the less meaning that when you have less, in order to make uh, this uh, thing, when you have less, then you have this positive charge lah, positive charge lah. Because positive charge meaning that you have what we call the hole, mean that the less electron. That's what does it mean by less. Because in order for the silicon, if you look here, the silicon need six lah, eh, need uh, four. Because you can see here, the silicon needs four. One, two, three, four. Four valence electron in order to connect with another four here. One, two, three. 3, 4 in order to connect make a covalent nice but you ha if you have 3 if you put instead of 4 you put 3 like in case of boron then you have less electron when you have less electron it's a positive charge lah. because charge is when you have electron then you have negative charge when you have less then you have positive lah. we call it hole positive so this hole this thing can move around this hole can also move around here 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 so that's why you get the electricity also even though you uh, so you can get uh, electricity if you dope the silicon either with phosphorus or boron okay that's a two example lah. but the reason is because you can move the they are mobile charge that's the idea behind the doping lah. so if you want to know more then you can read a little bit lah about this doping but the idea is that when you have this mobile then you have the electricity so when you have this, so when you dop the silicon and then you, what we call, you sandwich them together, you get transistor and so on. So that's basically uh, what we call uh, uh, the, the story about this, uh, the doping lah. So what we learn now is basically, so previously we talked about four, right? Four fundamental force, which is one is uh, gravity and then electro, electromagnet. So we focus on these two, eh? We focus on these two. The rest is like strong. We don't we don't focus lah, strong and weak. Strong force is basically just uh you see inside the atom ah. inside the atom inside the atom just give you the idea inside the atom in the middle here. So let's say this is the electron in the middle here. There are uh, proton right. Proton is positive right. Positive and positive. How how come they positive and positive doesn't repel? So basically, there are strong force here. There are strong force that hold the proton together. Because by right, proton is positive, and then proton, another proton also positive. By right, if you have, you cannot have the cluster of proton, because it will repel each other. So the strong force, the term strong force is that they they bind this thing together. 
So that's uh, it's like a glue lah. The weak force uh, normally uh, deal with the radioactivity lah. Radioactivity lah. Okay, it's already uh, 10 4. Uh, I think that's it uh, for today. Uh, we don't have time for the uh, extra, what you call? The, 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 what? The, 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 the quiz because it's already uh, past 10. So the last class, there are no quiz. There are no quiz. Uh, there are no quiz question. Question time. There are no question for this. Okay, so we end our uh, final class with a session of Tasbih Kafaroh and Surah Tunas.